Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in another opportunity uh, the day that the Lord has made. We do rejoice. We are glad in it because every time we read the Word of God, it doesn't come back to us empty. Um, he says where, they, where the Word of God is, there the Spirit of God is. And so we are blessed today to be able to read His Word, be encountered by His Spirit, and be able to walk within the kingdom of God. We're in Luke chapter 19 verse 11 and as we continue to listen to jesus during this lenten time he says some incredible um encountering uh challenging but also affirming words and so today we get to listen to a parable jesus is on his way up to jerusalem he's just passed through jericho as we said in our last video and he uh, got to meet zacchaeus there as he says salvation has come to this house Today, he continues to walk in teaching people what the kingdom of God is like. They have so many thoughts. They have so many ideas of what this kingdom of God could be like. They would say that the kingdom of God is going to be this military power, this, this earthly reign that is going to be able to overthrow the Romans, overthrow any kind of power that there is at that point, and he established that, that throne again. If it's from David, it's going to be like David. And so that's what they got the picture of, and Jesus is going to speak to them and speak to us. And so we listen in to Jesus about his parable about the kingdom of God. Chapter 19 of the Gospel of Luke, verse 11. Let's read together. While they were listening to this, maybe some of the words that were coming from Zacchaeus' home, right? He went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem, and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. They had their thoughts on what the kingdom of God was going to be like. And he said, let's listen in, tells this story. Uh, parables are uh, earthly stories with heavenly meetings earthly stories with heavenly meetings he's going to unfold a little bit about the kingdom of god but also understanding that the kingdom of god is present here on earth in jesus he said in verse 12 a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return we want to set this up real quickly as I don't want to get in too deep into study with you here, but being able to have this devotion. Here we get to see that Jesus is really calling out his prediction once again and being able to say, um, a man of noble birth, Jesus, um, not noble in the fact that he was in a stable, but noble birth coming into this world, went to a distant country and then he was going to return. So there was going to be a reign over here maybe to, speaking of Galilee in that kind of sense, but being able to say, and then he's going to return. It really is talking about his returning again. And he's going to be called, uh, he's going to be, make himself king. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. He entrusted a part of his estate to these servants. What does this sound like? This sounds like, Jesus going away, but giving the part of his estate, right, part of his legacy, part of his kingdom to his servants, the church, and he goes away and says, put this to work. So we have that command. We have this, put this to work until I come back. Verse 14, but his subjects hated him. This is talking about the Jews because they didn't accept him as that king. They didn't accept him as that one bringing about the kingdom of God. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, because it's of God's choosing, um, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. If you put it to work, it's going to do some gain. The first one came and said, Sir, your mina has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your mina has earned five more. His master answered, You take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. His master replied, 
I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I am a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow? You assumed that. Why then didn't you put my money on deposit, so that when I came back I could have collected it with interest? You didn't do anything with what I given to you? The command that I gave to you here is a minor, right? And being able to, to understand that this is three months worth wages, uh, small compared to the parable that we get to see in Matthew, but being able to understand that he was giving part of his faith, and he just says, here's, here's this money, put it to work until I come back. That servant didn't heed his words. His servant just thought what he would do on his own and being able to say, I know him to be a hard man. He's going to be okay if I just have what he gave me when he comes back. But that wasn't the command. He didn't listen to the king. He didn't listen to his master. Here is a part of my estate. Here is money. Put it to work. Go to work. Work hard. The first two did, and they were rewarded. The third one was apathetic. Just wanted to give back what he what he received. That wasn't the command of the king. Verse 24, then he said to those standing by, take his mina away from him and give it to the one who has ten minas. Sir, they said, he already has ten. He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what he has will be taken away. What we get to see and we get to interpret this parable because it's a heavenly meaning, right, with an earthly story. But what he's trying to get to is the kingdom of God of being able to say that as Jesus extends the kingdom to these people and they work within the church, within the kingdom, right, they have and actually the riches that we have in salvation will continue to multiply because that's what the kingdom of God is like. It's not going to be this earthly wealth towards the kingdom of God, but it is this heavenly wealth, this salvation, this righteousness, this holiness that continues to amplify as we walk and as we work out within our faith, as God continues to deliver his provision. So those who have will only gain more. Those who do not have, those who do not have, are not in the kingdom of God, even what they have will be taken, right? Because they're going to think that this earthly wealth is the thing that they're going to seek after, but that's gone. That's gone when their life is gone, but eternal life continues to amplify, but not for them if they don't have that, if they're not in the kingdom of God. And even more than that, the verse goes on. It says this, because we only heard about three servants. He gave it to ten, right? But those enemies of mine, those who made a delegation, didn't even want him to be king, kind of putting a little bit of a jab right here in this context towards the Jews. They didn't want him to be king. Hey, take that sign down. He's not king of the Jews. What I've written, I've written, Pilate said. They didn't want him to be king. And he says here, hey, but those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. What they have, they're not going to even have. Death comes. Condemnation comes for those who are not in Christ Jesus. But now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who are in the kingdom of God. And eternal life just continues to multiply, continues to shower its riches, continues to heed us, push us forward within faith. But Jesus speaks here, and we listen to him. We've been distributed the gospel. We've been given the keys of the kingdom of God. And Jesus says, go to work until I come back. Jesus is coming back. And he always speaks those words as well. Before in the Gospel of Luke, will he find faith in this world? Let's go to work. Not to merit our salvation, not to earn a likeness before God or before others, but we've been given, we've been entrusted this incredible gospel that changes eternal life for people. We've been given the keys of the kingdom of God to forgive sins of those who we forgive. Let's get to work. Let's not shy away and just kind of hold into, oh, we've, we've been given this forgiveness, we've been given this gospel, and so let's, let's hoard that in. Let's make sure that we take care of our little mina, our little entrusted kingdom for when he comes back and give it to him. I buried away in a cloth. No, that's not what he asks us to do. I've given you the gospel. I've given you forgiveness of sins. Now go. 
Go and make disciples. Go and, and with the entrusted gospel that you have, transform lives. So that's what we have as a command today. Let's listen to Jesus. Let's hear him say, I've entrusted you. I've given you this this state of the kingdom of God. Go to work. Get to work today. It's a blessing to be able to be at work with the Lord. Because his work doesn't come back empty. His work doesn't come back. Nothing is in vain when you labor for Christ. And so, brothers and sisters, let's get to work. Let's be the church. Let's celebrate the salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. Have a blessed day.